In this story, we travel to Enugu to meet a family that has not one, not two, but four disabled children. Despite the daily hardships of providing shelter, food, and basic medical treatments, they see their children as precious gifts and have remained determined to overcome their challenges through their love for each other. Topped away in the safety of GRA in Enugu, the Chime family is surviving through the generous help of their church and community members, providing them with a place to live and a glimpse of a normal life. They have no work, no money, and no means to take care of the children's special needs. Life is a continuous struggle that has now become unbearable, even with the assistance of community members and their generous landlord. I'm Makita Jude Emejulu, uh, living at uh, Transekulu, northern part of Transekulu, and uh, I happen to be the landlord of the Chime family. We go to the same church and uh, the same fellowship. So from there, I discovered uh, their predicament. That is uh, the problem with the children, those that uh, have some hearing impairment, uh, one problem or the other. So I, then I started associating with them. My name is Philomena Chime. I was married with Sonny Chime. Udi, here in Enugu State, we are from Udi. Then after the marriage, we went to Kano. I'm Chime, son of Shedrak. I'm the husband to Mrs. Philomena Chime. We got married in 1980, had eight children to date. Four are physically challenged, four are normal. So the four children, three had the physical challenges and one disabilities. So because of it, we decided to come down to Enugu and seek help for their treatments. The elder one, Chibweze, has a ear impediment. You cannot hear, when he turn, you cannot hear you. And the uh, uh, speech also. Then the second one, Chibuzo, also had the same ear impediment. Chibweze is even better than him. So the speech and also the hearing. Then Chisum, Chisum had also a problem in the brain. Sometimes she would just fell down and be shaking. Sometimes she will just decided to pull off her wheels and she also has speech problems. She cannot interact with you. And that's her own. Then, Choka, he cannot talk. And his own, uh, I'm not God, but his own is worse than the rest because he's <laughs> just deformed, deformed. That's the last effort. We've been trying all our possible best to keep them school, but to a certain extent, I couldn't make it. If I have to sell my car for the hospital bill and all these things, couldn't make up paying my rent at Zeke Avenue where I was living then. So the landlord have to quit us. The landlady have to quit us. So we came to this federal housing. So from my association with them, I discovered that uh, they couldn't, uh, they were unable to pay a rent for where they would stay. So I had to ask them to come and start staying here. This is a place, a kind of quarters for some of my staff. My name is Shime Shibweza. I'm from Enugu, Ijitan. Uh, I'm graduated from IMT Enugu. Student of uh, education. Uh, I'm an unemployed. I'm not working right now. I have a um, local problem. I can't hear very well. And I can't speak very well. I'm my brother and my sister are having more physical than me. 
that I'm trying to help. And uh, my mom and my dad, they can in, uh, they're in, in finding them difficult to help. So I'm trying my best to help. So uh, things are very difficult in Nigeria. And it's very, very difficult for us, but I'm trying my best. So, uh, Looking after four physically challenged children, paying the hospital, buying drugs, going to uh, looking after them. Some of them don't come out. Some of them you have to carry them before they do this thing. So it's very challenging and very this, and even affecting my own health. I don't walk as I used to do. I don't have any movable thing to take them on and doing these things. So it's, it's, the challenge is it's not what I can physically express, but somebody who is closer to me will know exactly. I'm in hell, while on earth, four out of eight. There are many challenges. You can never, not, no freedom, cannot go out, cannot do anything. Because the girl, you have to follow her around. She cannot bath herself. If she go to the toilet, you must come and uh, for take, give her water to wash. You must be uh, very uh, observant to wash her hands. Her clothes, she, she will like to wear dirty clothes. Dirty clothes. And she cannot eat food without meat. Then choke her. You can see her going to the toilet. You will clean, wash. You cannot wash. Bath. So it's a big, a big challenge. I'm having hypertension now. And uh, I don't talk too much or be where there is noise because of my heart, my heart pains. And all over my body pains. Those are the pains that I'm having. The landlord also generously donated a table tennis set as a way to develop motor skills and release the tension of a stressful life. Having a bit of fun helps them to forget about their troubles. My major wish is for their health issues to be taken care of and maybe offer the employment to the, offer employment to the boy that has already graduated and maybe the father so that they will help to be taken care of uh, the little ones. If Ethel assists me in the children, either treating them or giving the graduate work or any other this thing, it will be very much appreciated. And the seven real life. This one is not only touching life, but seven life of this family, because we're almost collapsing. I don't know where her strength comes from, and I don't know how she hasn't given up yet. I'd like to welcome our next guest to the studio, Filomena Chibweze and her two sons, Chibuzo and Chime. <laughs> welcome to the program. Oh, thank you, ma. Um, I'm, I'm watching that, and mm. the first question I want to ask you is, how have you managed to not give up yet? It's God Almighty. He's my strength. He's everything to me. He's the one that kept me alive and helped me to cope with them. So Chibu, is it, what would you love for your mother? What would you love to see happen to her? When I see her in a good mood or in a bad mood, I'm trying to calm her down. Well, sometimes, each time she's trying, I don't feel comfortable. So I'm trying my best to make her happy, to feel good. But I believe one day everything will arise. What are the kind of things that you think can help you? Anything. I don't have choice. Anything that will bring peace in my heart and stop my BP. Well, I want to say thank you. <laughs> thank you for sharing your story with us. <laughs> thank you for just being strong and looking after your wonderful children. It's the Lord's doing. Because Ethel wants to do something very special for you oh. to support you and touch your life and touch your children's lives. 
So they're going to provide two hearing aids. <laughs> All right, for Chibu and Chibuzo. Oh, God. They're also going to give Chibu Chibuzo speech therapy. <laughs> and um, they'll give drugs to treat Chisum. All right. And it doesn't stop there. There's also Etel Insurance. Two of your children at 5,000 naira per month. They are going to construct you a poultry cage with 200 birds. Oh, it's unbelievable. No. I'm feeling like dying. I'm feeling. I'm a turkey, man. It's too much on me, Tobia. Is it? Is it like dream? Oh. It's too much. The joy is too much. Oh, it's too much. God bless you. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us and sharing yourself and your strength and your passion for your children as well. You're going to be inspiring a lot of people watching this, including myself. It's been a very emotional day at the Touching Lives studio today. We would like to say thank you for joining us on Airtel Touching Lives.